Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Hapanwo TV on Vidme. Uh, this is another video that's not going to be available on YouTube. As I said before, I'm, there's too much on YouTube. I can't cope with all the things like comments and stuff like that. It's just too much. So uh, this is only going to be available on Vidme. But I, I know most of my YouTube viewers do know now I have a Vidme channel. So um, I'm sure most of you will find this. I did mention it in, in, in my YouTube videos. Now today I'm going to talk about art, an art, a particular artist that I've become very interested in. Now, when it comes to art, I'm pretty traditional. I like classic paintings, I like sculptures of famous people, oil paintings of landscape that are representational and naturalistic and things like that. Um, I don't know if I've, I don't know if you've ever seen Jonathan Bowden's Against the Turner Prize. Um, I quite like that. I quite endorse some of the ideas that Bowden is putting across in that. Now, this doesn't mean to say I'm averse to non-naturalistic styles. I mean, as in Bowden himself was uh, was quite abstract in many, many ways. And I'm, I do like things like shamanic and psychedelic art. Um, in fact, I find some artists really, fascinated, really fascinate me. People like Neil Haig, uh, Pablo Emeringo, um, Alex Gray, um, so that kind of art is quite nice, but um, the, the artist I'm going to talk about really fits into the area of modern art or postmodern art, and that's most of that is where I draw the line. You know, uh, dirty beds, dead cows, crucifixes suspended in urine. I just, I mean, these are some of the famous so-called exhibits you'll get if you go to the Tate Modern and you go down to the deepest, darkest vaults, you'll find even worse horrors down there. You really do. Um, and I, I'm afraid I consider such things tasteless and meaningless. Some of them are just intended to provoke, I think, and to, to, to get a reaction. I think these people are the artistic equivalent of, of trolls. Um, occasionally, though, you get a postmodern artwork that really makes me take a second look. And one of those... And one of the artists I'm talking about here is um, Patricia Piccinini. Now, uh, she is a sculptress from Australia. And uh, she's very, very different to her rather second-rate contemporaries in that she has genuine talent. And she produces some, she produces some creations, some sculptures, some images that are really very thought-provoking. But no less macabre. And there's all kinds of um, things that she... I mean, her sculptures, I'll show you some in a minute. But there's things like um, you get what looks like surreal mutant figures. Um, sometimes you get like, things that, figures that seem to be made of different human body parts arranged in a grotesque and unnatural way. Um, another, another sort of area she goes into is strange animals. She often carves um, sculptures of strange animals that appear to be hybrids of two or more species, usually including humans. Um, I'll, there's one called the Young Family. I'll show, you, I'll show you one of them in a minute too. But I find the most disturbing of Piccinini's images, and I'll, I've got an example of that as well, are those which depict these aberrations next to natural human figures. And that really freaks me out, I must say. So I'll tell you what, I'm just have a look at some of them now. Now, in 2016, Patricia Piccinini was employed by the Transport Accident Commission of Victoria to create something for their Towards Zero campaign. Now, Towards Zero is a, is a promotion they ran to try and reduce road traffic accidents to the lowest possible figure they could achieve, to make roads as safe as possible. So they asked her to imagine what the human body would look like if evolutionary natural selection over many generations favoured the ability to survive car accidents. And the result was this, it's called Graham.
Well, have I given you nightmares for tonight now? Yeah, I mean, that creature is, is that being, whatever it is, is, is barely recognisable as human. Um, the first thing you notice about it, which Piccinini had to imagine, she worked, actually worked with a trauma surgeon to actually achieve the ideal form for surviving road crashes. So, so if something's in a car crash, what, what would the human body need to look like in order to be ideal to survive car crashes? And um, you see a creature there with a very robust frame. It has no neck. Its head is surrounded by muscle and skull. It's probably got a very thick skull, a lot of muscle around, or, or, or cushioning material, fat, protective fat around its head. Because um, head injuries are the biggest problem in, in, in very serious car accidents. And the trauma surgeon that worked with Piccinini to, to, to create this being. Um, it has bigger and thicker bones than natural humans. And, but these, this, this is what you would need. This is what you would need. If you wanted to withstand the forces of high-speed road collisions, that's what you would have to look like. And it's, it's pretty, it, when I saw that, it, it, it did, um, it gave me the chills. Now, I don't know how many of you um, remember this. It's quite a long time ago. Some, maybe before some, some people were born. I mean, maybe I'm showing my age now. But there was this TV anti-smoking advert called um, The First Natural Born Smoker. It's, uh, yeah, I'll, um, it's, it was, it, that it was a little bit of a, um, you should find it on YouTube, just Google, world's first natural born smoker. Now, when I look at Patricia Piccinini and her various works, I wonder where she gets her ideas from. Now, this is what the, uh, the Art Gallery of South Australia said this, Piccinini vividly recalled a simultaneous revulsion and fascination at the time of her first foray into pseudo-eugenics when she created a lump-like creature from raw pigskin. While the impetus to experiment with the creation of synthetic life forms remains, she has an ambivalent attitude towards technology and she uses her artistic practice as a forum for discussion about how technology impacts upon life. She is keenly interested in how contemporary ideas of nature, the natural and the artificial, are changing our society. Specific works have addressed concerns about biotechnology, such as gene therapy <laughs> and ongoing research into mapping the human genome. She is also fascinated by the mechanisms of consumer culture. Now, what I first noticed about Patricia Piccinini in her work was, she may not know this, but according to several people, um, the, the kind of beings that she depicts, or similar ones, actually exist. And they exist in secret government laboratories, and they have been produced in secret government laboratories, where genetic experimentation <coughs> is in covert facilities. is not only more advanced than it is within in the public scientific realm, but it operates without licensing and legal restrictions that would be necessary in the public realm. Now, um, good examples of this is in her own country, Pine Gap. This is a secret American-run base in Central Australia in the desert. I've actually been, I've actually been there. I've actually seen it myself. I went on a coach trip, and it drove past there. And the driver said to us, um, he said, "Don't ever ask people." Oh, well, there was a tour guide, not the driver, but he says, "Don't ever ask people who work there what they do, because they'll just tell you they're janitors, because they're not allowed to talk about what they're doing because it's so secret." Um, Pine Gap is supposedly like an electronics intelligence facility, but it probably does a lot more. Um, another is um, something a bit more controversial and dubious, and that is the Dulce base. You may have read the Dulce book by Branson. Um, several people have come out um, and talked about this. Um, there's Montauk. You may be familiar with uh, Al Bielek and uh, Stuart Swerdlow, people like that who have alleged to have uh, that there is a genetic experimentation and mind control does various other things at the Montauk in uh, New York state at the end of Long Island on the eastern pin pinnacle of Long Island, eastern, the eastern peninsula of Long Island. Now, um, and inter interestingly, unlike Dulcie, there is actually distinct evidence that such a thing exists because there was a closed World War II base called Camp Hero. And um, Richard Dolan and several people from the Discovery Channel actually went into um, went into Pine Gap 
and uh, not into Pine Gap, sorry, into Camp Hero. They went and explored Camp Hero with ground penetration radar, and they found spaces underneath the ground exactly where Bielek and Swerdlow and the others said there was an underground facility. Not only that, but there were there were tunnels. They found the entrance to tunnels. Unfortunately, the tunnels were flooded. They couldn't get very far down them, but they were like um, tunnels leading down into the ground. There's a book called there's a film called The Montauk Chronicles that's just come out, which discusses this in more detail. Also, I mean, Dulcie. I don't discount the idea of Dulcie base. I mean, Phil Schneider, for example, was murdered. No doubt about it. It was not a suicide. He was murdered. He talked about this just before his death, and he predicted his own murder. Um, now. There's organisations like Project for the New American Century, which talk quite openly and seriously about the theoretical use of biotechnology for their purposes, in, in, creati in creating the perfect military force for the future. Now, whenever the government talks about something publicly, theoretically, it's probably already doing it in secret. This includes things such as geoengineering, chemtrails, stuff like that, um, free energy, free energy technology, uh, UFO research, stuff like that. Now, um, the first thing that strikes me, when you look at Graham, that, that sculpture that she did for the, the Transport of Accident Commission of Victoria, it not only would it be the ideal, or ideal organism to survive a car crash, it would also make an excellent soldier, because it would, its body would be durable enough to survive being shot and explosions. From, from various ordnance, things like that. It would be able to, perhaps to resist bullets. And if it uh, stepped on a mine or was hit by a hand grenade or something, it would be able to resist the impact of the explosion. Um, so is it possible that some mad scientist in some underground base somewhere in the world has created something like that, or maybe even some of the other, monstrosities that Piccinini has, con has, has come up with in her sculptures. If so, has v Patricia Piccinini had access to this information? Or it's, who knows? Maybe she, she's actually been to Pine Gap, I don't know. Or maybe she's been influenced psychically by the various witnesses, I don't know. Or it could simply be that her artwork is a product of her imagination. A very, a very fertile, very clever imagination. But also, it's a very ghoulish imagination. Who knows? But when I look at those images, those horrible images, I mean, they do, they freak me out. They're clever, but they're scary. And I think to myself, where on earth does she get her ideas? I thank you for watching her Panwo TV on Vidme. Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order.